Ollie's Farmers, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another YouTube video. If you haven't already, tap the subscribe button down below, tap the little bell to be notified when there is a new episode of Ollie's Farm. Check out Ollie's Farm merch which is www.teespring.com forward slash Ollie's Farm to go and check out all of the merch. Woohoo! <laughs> Today I'm going to show you guys how to drive the John Deere, how to drive a tractor. That is today's video. So that's what we're up to. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video when we got the John Deere washed off at the garage. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We seem to have had some good feedback from that video. So thanks very much for all of your kind support. Thanks very much for commenting and thanks very much for liking the videos. Okay guys, so here she is. So someone commented last night and said, Ollie, what is your favourite tractor? Well, that's quite a difficult question because I've got lots of favourite tractors. Um, but if I had to be honest, um, obviously the 6930 is one of my all-time favourites, but also I do like the John Deere 7810 and the Fent 515 favourite, which is an old school Fent with an MWM engine, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so <laughs> I've actually got like three favourite tractors um, and I just can't pick between all of them, it's so hard. So I'm now going to switch to head cam mode. Okay guys, so here she is. For those of you who don't know, this is um, a John Deere 6930. This particular model was built in 2010, it's got a 6.8 litre John Deere Powertech engine and it's also got a ZF auto power transmission which I'll show you guys how that works in just a bit. On the front we've got Continental tyres, they're 420 85Rs, um, so they are actually quite a, a narrow tyre when compared with most modern tractors these days. That's why I was saying yesterday it would be nice to have some 600s on this machine or maybe even 650s. <laughs> I don't know whether you could actually fit them onto the rims. Um, but then on the other hand, narrow tyres is great for when we're in the buildings, when we're feeding all of the cattle in the winter months. So it's actually great when we are trying to get down like the narrow passages for example. So let me just show you down here. This is a 50 kph model for those of you who don't know. So it can do 50 kilometers an hour on the road. I think it actually does 55 kilometers an hour. I don't know why it does 55 and not 50. There must be something which allows it to do that. Moving to the back of the machine, we can see we've got the rear linkage. So kind of very different to what we've been seeing the past few days with the Fent and the JCB. Um, if you just look, start from the top here. Okay, we've just got a standard top link there, no hydraulic top link, um, although you can get one. Um, here, here's our hydraulic SCVs which have these nice little covers on them um, which are quite nice for, for just um, covering up the dust. These are the front hydraulic um, spools which aren't currently plugged in because we normally have to take these out so that we can use these other two for the feeding machine and these two spools when you plug them in they will actually, if you're operating an implement, they also override and for some reason control the front linkage at the front so I think we need to put a tap in to shut off the front linkage uh, so that we can operate these back SCVs without the front linkage going up and down. So that is a little job to do. Obviously at the back we've got the air brakes here. This is our electric outlet for a trailer. Here's our hydraulic brake outlet. And this as well is for the back end oil of the machines. And here's our PTO and we've got the hook drawbar in, which has been causing me a bit of bother lately because it is worn down quite a bit. Some of you guys have commented and said to put some grease on there. So I'll try it out next time. I'll put some grease on there and see if it makes a difference. Um, but I just think because of where it's worn, it's worn down to here. It's just, just enough with the, the horseshoe of the trailer, I think, to just stop it from coming out. But I'll try it with some grease and see how we get on. So moving to the back of the fenders, we've obviously got large um, black plastic mud guards. And uh, if we just move up here, we've got the linkage up and down controls here. And as well on the left hand side, we've got the PTO on and off. So you can operate the PTO, the power takeoff shaft from the back of the machine there. And on this side, I've got this sticker here, which is actually a warning sticker. But what's annoying is that I've got it on this side and I pressure washed it off not that long ago. Um, when I was cleaning up the tractor off. So, and I don't know where to find this other, this sticker. So if anyone knows where I can get a sticker like this, um, so I can put another one on there, just <laughs> to match it up again, um, do leave a comment in the comment section below. So moving around, we've got the up and down as well and the PTO on there as well also. Um, so here's the deep dish yellow rims. Uh, on the backs, they're Continentals again and they're 520 85s. So they're slightly bigger tires width wise on the back and obviously a lot, lot taller than the front tires. And here as well is a little electric power outlet just here. So you can fuel up the tractor in the field, for example. There's a little John Deere toolbox down there, which has been nicely fitted on. If we just move around to the front, we've got a Zutterberg front linkage and I had to buy some new link arms for this because when we bought the tractor, someone had actually cut the front link arms off so that's why um, the link arms are, are both brand new um, but the linkage is uh, a bit older so that's why that is guys so let's have a look inside the cab and uh, 
let's take her out for a drive. Okay guys, so to drive this tractor is very simple. There's lots of different models of tractors around the world. So this tractor is relatively simple to drive. To drive this tractor, you simply just need to pull down the steering wheel like so. You've got your shuttle here on the left-hand side, which operates forwards and backwards, indicated by this little diagram here. And on the right hand side, we can see that we've got the auto power control. So we've got two different ranges. We've got high and low here. So we've got the snail there obviously representing slow and the hare representing speed. Here's our rev throttle, but we won't be needing that today. You just want to use the throttle on the ground if you're just going for a drive with the tractor. So, so to drive a tractor, you just simply want to make sure that the machine is in neutral, start it up with the keys on the right hand side there and then make sure that you're in the right range. With this tractor, it's an auto power range, so it's an infinitely variable transmission. So we can actually leave it in the high range because we're gonna go on the road today. And all we need to do is put the machine into forwards, like so, and the machine will spring forwards once you put the shuttle into the forwards position there. So to then increase the speed, we can just simply put our foot on the throttle there, just like driving an automatic car, and you'll speed up. So we can just use the indicators there to let everybody know where we're going. <clears throat> in the UK, we also generally just use the amber lights on the top there, just to warn motorists on the road that we're a larger vehicle and that we're coming through. So that's why it's used in the UK. So with the steering in a tractor, it's very light, the steering. It's not like being in a car at all. The steering's very responsive and super, super light because those wheels down there are very heavy. So you need a big hydraulic system to make, them to make the wheels move quickly when you need them to. So that's why um, the steering is really, really light, guys. So using my indicator there, oh, we've got a van coming up here, so I'll just, uh, just stop there. And uh, we'll just let this van go past. <clears throat> and out onto the open road. So we can increase our throttle speed now because we're onto a a longer stretch of road here. And we can hear the transmission doing it, all of its work down below, the infinitely variable transmission. It's, it has a, like a whining noise. That's, that's what you're hearing, is, is the transmission just building up the speed there. So you don't really need to use two hands on the steering wheel with a tractor because the, the steering is very, like I said, light. So you need to do lots of turns. So you really just want to have one hand on the steering wheel, ideally, and then you can have the other one just holding the bottom just to keep it secure. And other farmers as well will just rest their hands on the gear stick here or just on the armrest like so. So we can build our speed up even more now. We're on a longer stretch of road here. So we're gonna head up now to 55 kph. We've got it set in miles per hour at the moment on the right hand side there. And there we go, 50 kph. Just want to slow down a bit for this corner up here. Then we can resume the revs. <clears throat> So for some of you guys out there who are just curious about how to drive a tractor, I know a lot of you guys are farmers as well who are subscribers, but a lot of you guys out there I know aren't farmers as well, and you've been asking me how to operate the 6.9, so this is how to do it guys. It's super simple. I'm just gonna pull over now for this car so that they can go past. That's the good thing when you're in a tractor, is you can just literally pull onto a verge <laughs> or a piece of land and you haven't got to worry at all. That is the beauty of driving a tractor. So I'll just turn right now and we'll head up on to this piece of road here. Also your brake is just down there so that's how you stop the tractor. There's a clutch as well but that's only for actually emergency situations. You don't actually need to use the clutch with this particular model. Although with other geared tractors with gear levers obviously you, you will be using the clutch. So I've just put the indicator on there to turn right. So we'll just head back to the farm and pull up with the John Deere. Just turning the ignition off there to turn the tractor off. So, <clears throat> there we go guys. I hope you've enjoyed just seeing how to drive the tractor there. Hopefully you were pleasantly surprised as to how easy it is to operate the tractor. 
Of course, there is a lot of other functions you can do with the tractor, and, and it can get a lot more complicated when you're operating implements and other things, etc. But for the most part, this tractor is really easy to drive. Anyone could just get on it and drive it, like how I showed you how to drive it today with the shuttle and just the brake and the accelerator. That's the great thing about the infinitely variable transmissions. I'm going to go and take Clover for a walk now. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do tap the subscribe button down below, and you can also tap the little bell to be notified when there is a new episode of Ollie's Farm. And as always, guys, do comment, rate, and subscribe for plenty more videos to come.